All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. And today we're gonna look at just how desperate the state of the DCEU is uh, and the DCU going forward. And uh, yeah, I've got some photos to show. Now, before I do that, I want to address a couple of things. First of all, as soon as I'm done here, I am gonna have a movie review later for a movie called The Killer, which is streaming right now. It's not in theaters. It's available for streaming, and a lot of people have asked me to do a review on that movie, and it is getting stellar reviews. So I'm going to go find out what that movie is all about. Uh, so I will have a review for that later. Now, I've had some people, one specific person has been coming into my comments and trolling everybody, and they seem to think that the DCU is doing great. They have great hope for the future, and they talk about how bad Batman versus Superman did and how amazing the Suicide Squad was. And I'm going to point something out, and you cannot debate facts. I don't care that the Suicide Squad came out in the middle of a pandemic. It was still released in theaters. People could go, and people were going to the movies during this time period. You had big hits like Godzilla and some other films, uh, and they all did better than the Suicide Squad did. The fact is, nobody went to see this movie. It was a huge bomb. One indication on how well a movie does is also on the home video sales, on Blu-ray, DVD, 4K, and the Suicide Squad sold like crap. They couldn't give the movies away. You cannot debate those facts. Black Adam, on the other hand, when Black Adam got released, sold a ton of copies, tons of copies on Blu-ray, 4K, and DVD. People did not care about The Suicide Squad. That movie, by all accounts, every measure, was a freaking bomb. Batman vs. Superman was not a bomb. It had the biggest opening weekend of any DC film, I think, ever. It went on to make a, a ton of money that in today's money would be about a billion dollars. The Batman, which just came out a year and a half ago, didn't even come close to that. Okay? Didn't even come close to that. that. And that movie was released on the tail end of the pandemic. People were going back to the movies. It had a ton of promotions and still could not even break close to a billion dollars. Didn't even make three quarters of a billion dollars. Okay? It just didn't. It is a fact that more people were going into the theaters to see these early DCEU films than anything after, after Justice League. Uh, in fact, I would say after Aquaman, because everything after that just trailed down, 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 and then people started to come back for Black Adam and then took a nosedive when they, when they announced a reboot. You cannot debate this. It's a fact. It's what happened. More tickets were being sold, and I don't care if it hurts your feelings. I don't care if you need to hear the truth. It's a fact. The Suicide Squad is not as good as people make it out to be. I don't care what Rotten Tomatoes shows you. We've, they've already proven over this last year that the scores on there have been tailored and faked. And not enough people went to go see it to give an honest score. I, I've seen the movie twice. The first time I thought it was decent. Second time I saw it, I hated it. Like, it's a terrible film. It is a terrible film. And I don't hate James Gunn's movies. I love Slither. I think it's a really good movie. I like the, the Guardians of the Galaxy films. They are decent films. But there's also a ridiculous amount of jokes in all of those movies. That's not what I want for the DCU. Now, you can say all day long that he says the tone is going to be different for all of these movies, but he has to prove himself. It is a fact that Superman Legacy has to be the biggest hit that Warner Brothers has ever had, or this universe is dead on arrival. It's a fact. And I, you know, we're going to look at some photos today. There are some photos that have come out of David, David Cornsweat, and, and they're trying to make him look like identical, a one-to-one -one copy of Henry Cavill, which is pretty pathetic. Uh, but we're going to take a look at some of these photos. So let's get started. So here's the first photo I wanted to show you. This is Henry Cavill and David Cornsweat. And the good news is, and I forgot to show the photo last week uh, of, of David Corrin Sweat. You know, he was, there was a photo released, the first like official photo. And I believe he was wearing this exact same thing and he was in the gym. Uh, it looked like he was in the gym. He may not have been, but uh, he has definitely bulked up. And boy, are they really trying to make him look 
like identical to what Henry Cavill looked like. It's, it's pretty crazy what they're trying to do here. Here's another photo of him. I don't know. This could be. This could have something to do with Superman Legacy, or it could be some kind of a choir group. Who knows? But he is definitely bulked up, which is nice that he's not going to be the small guy he was, and he bulked up pretty quickly here. Now, I thought this was interesting. Now, this isn't directly DC-related, and I'm going to share this in my movie and TV show review or update that's going to be coming shortly. But it says, Ed- Edgar Wright says Hollywood franchises need to learn to take breaks. I wish some franchises would just kind of have the sense to take just a breather and let people get excited about it again. There are certain things that I loved and I don't want to see again, or I don't want to see them again for a long time. I wish some films and series that people would understand it's okay to take a break and build anticipation. Bravo. Um, What they're doing now is just trying to jam stuff down people's throats, and it's not necessarily what what the audience wants to see. So here's this graphic. Uh, This is what I referred to in my last video, showing how much money these films made. And I'm going to point out something. Uh, The second DC EU film was Batman vs. Superman. Okay, so this is early on. You had Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and then Justice League took a nosedive. Okay, now these are the early films. And you can see that Batman vs. Superman made over $800 million. Even Man of Steel made over $600 million. And here's another thing I wanted to talk about in Man of Steel that I wanted to talk about at the beginning of my video. This movie was making a profit before the movie ever got released. It's a fact. Man of Steel made bank for the studio. So did Batman vs. Superman. So did Suicide Squad. These movies made money for the studios. And you're going to see that People did not like Justice League, and then Aquaman came out, and it did phenomenally well. Now, everyone tells you, all of these anti-Snyder, anti-DCU fans come out and say, Batman versus Superman ruined the franchise, ruined movies. Then why did people come back for Suicide Squad? Why did people come back for Wonder Woman? Why did people come back for Aquaman? Why did they continue to come for the next three years? If this movie ruined everything, why did people still come to the theaters for three years? And then it took a nosedive. Now, I'm one of the few people that actually enjoyed Shazam. But Shazam was not... It was okay because of what the content was, what the character was. But the second one was terrible. And then you could see Birds of Prey went even lower. Wonder Woman 1984, The Suicide Squad... Then people started to come back for Black Adam. It is a fact people started to come back. And had it been released in China and a a couple of other places, it would have been up here where the early DCEU films were. It's a fact it would have gone up there. And then Shazam took a sharp nosedive. And what happened between here and here? The reboot was announced. And then you had The Flash. Some people went back. They were curious about, about having Michael Keaton back. He was the best part of the film. And then they took a dive for Blue Beetle. And so people just don't want to see these DC films anymore. And especially after the crap that the studio pulled right after Black Adam, they have no interest. And notice that these movies did worse than the movies during the pandemic. How crazy is that? You want to talk about crazy People didn't go to these movies during the pandemic. People always claim it's the pandemic that ruined everything. Shazam and Blue Beetle did worse than anything that came out during the pandemic. Let that sink in, people. Let that sink in. I think this is my new favorite graphic on the DC Universe. Now, this is something I want to bring up, and I'm also going to bring this up during my TV show and movie update, but it says this was released yesterday that all classic Looney Tunes shorts are being removed from Max on December 31st. There was massive backlash on social media about this. And this is one of the things that gets me. If if they want to move away from physical media and they expect everybody to go to streaming, you better have your back catalog available for people to watch. Because these are the things, I can tell you the one thing I hate about Disney Plus is the fact that you can't watch the old cartoons. Now the good news is there was a reversal overnight where where uh, the the head, you know, the people who run HBO Max or just Max or whatever you want to call it now, they came out and said that was posted by accident and that these cartoons are going to remain 
on Max after December 31st that it was a mistake that it was listed. I'm not sure there was a mistake. Maybe they saw the backlash. Who knows? But uh, we've seen a reversal on a couple of the decisions that Warner Brothers is making. They're finally uh, putting these uh, these could be they could be putting out feelers out there to find out what how the audience is going to react to some of this stuff. So the next photo is an older photo, but I find this hilarious. And again, this goes to show you that people don't want to work for Warner Brothers or DC right now. And this is from 11 months ago. It says Warner Brothers reportedly begged Joker director Todd Phillips to head up the DC studios. Yeah. He, he declined it, and that is well known. They, people have talked about this in the past. And nobody wants to have anything to do with this DCU. Now, this is something I grabbed off of my Twitter feed, which I thought was interesting. If you notice, look at some of the things that are trending right now. Henry Cavill is trending. Daredevil, Zack Snyder, Restore the Snyderverse. These are all trending things in my feed, which I thought was interesting. I always like it when I come in and see those things trending. It happens quite often. Now, the last photo I have for you is something that cracked me up, especially coming from James Gunn. He said, I get asked about rumors of various actors being cast in various roles every day. Just a blanket rule to keep in mind while assessing whether these rumors have any truth to them. 99% of the time, they are false. We are never going to cast roles without scripts. All right, I can appreciate his efforts to come out here and try and clarify stuff. But what was he just saying a couple of days ago when somebody asked him about casting people and have they ever done a fan cast? And he said that they always keep in mind these fan casts. If you don't want rumors to be spread, stay off of social media and stop addressing that stuff. Seriously, because that comment the other day does nothing other than muddy the waters and it makes something like this humorous when he's out there, the one, making some ridiculous comments. Uh, This guy... I am convinced now that he is not really the head of DC Studios, that it is Peter Safran. And we've already seen what Peter Safran said about movies back in 2018. And it looks like he's just continuing with that trend. And that James Gunn is here to write everything and direct everything. And I know that's a blanket statement, but if you look at what's been released so far, he's he wrote and directed the, uh, the what's that show coming out, the the... The Monster Squad. Let's call it The Monster Squad. I'm forgetting the name off the top of my head. The first animated feature. Uh, Nobody asked for that that show. He wrote and directed Superman Legacy. He's writing and directing Peacemaker Season 2. And it's rumored that he is going to be writing and directing some episodes of Booster Gold. Get this guy. He's supposed to be the co-CEO of DC Studios. He's not supposed to be writing and directing everything. Leave that to other people. Now, if this statement is very true, then they have not started to cast Batman Brave and the Bold, the Amazon show, the the, the Green Lantern show, unless they have, you know, scripts for it. But there's not a whole lot coming out. I do believe Creature Commandos and Superman Legacy, the studio is going to release both of these to see how they fare with the audience before they move forward with anything else. Uh, We will see, though. So, again, it is a fact that the DC Universe is in shambles. People don't want to go to the theaters to see this brand, and it's because of the damage that the studios have done. You cannot deny this. Superman Legacy has to be an amazing movie to get people back into theaters, and I don't think it's going to be up to the task. See, there was nothing bad. When the Batman came out, the Batman is not a DCU film, but more people went to go see it because it's Batman. Batman is a huge seller for Warner Brothers and always has been. No matter whether it's good or bad, people are going to see Batman. And that movie still didn't even break a billion dollars, but it made quite a bit of money. It had a low budget, which definitely helped the profit for the studio. But Superman, and and there was nothing bad about Batman. You know, everything Batman up to that point had been successful. People were waiting for Ben Affleck's movie. That's what people really wanted to see. You want a billion-dollar film? Do the Batman versus Deathstroke film. That would break a billion dollars, guaranteed at the box office. People would go see that. I don't understand how the studios can't see this. This would be a guaranteed billion-dollar hit. So would Man of Steel, too. It's just people would go to see these films. There's no question about it. But to reboot Superman, Superman is not their number one brand. It's been damaged. You're coming off of Superman Returns, which was not very well received by the public. Uh, I actually enjoy the movie, but I don't love the film. But I think it's a decent follow-up to Superman 1 and 2. Uh, It's definitely better than 3 and 4 of Superman, and it was definitely in that continuity. 
but um, it didn't do well. It didn't do as well for the studio. And so for them to be banking on Superman and making that their first project when people wanted to see Henry Cavill back as Superman is a stupid move. It is a stupid business move. Plain and simple. It's a stupid business move. And the company is suffering because of it. Show me to any show me anything that proves otherwise. All right, guys, there's my update for the day. I will be back as more information gets released. I do appreciate the support. Look for that uh, killer review uh, later today, and we'll see you on the next video.